man mistrusted as a crude Westerner leads a diverse group of Americans to secure America's freedom in its second war of independence. Now that should be a movie. Hello, and thank you for watching today's episode of That To Be A Movie. I'm C.W. Johnson Jr. Today's book I can pitch as a movie is Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans, The Battle That Saved America's Destiny by Brian Comeed and Don Yeager from Tip. While I have done a more in-depth presentation on the Battle of New Orleans for our Independence Day, see link below and at the end of this video, since today is the 203rd anniversary of the battle, I would like to review the latest book that has come out about it, Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans. An easy but exciting read, it kept reminding me how this important historical event would make an epic summer blockbuster release. Are you listening, Jerry Bruckenheimer and Michael Bay? While not as in-depth as some of the other books on the subject, it does shed light on some other interesting points that the books I reviewed in my July the 4th video didn't get into. Because the focus is on Andrew Jackson at the cost of other historical figures who are at the battle such as Juan Lafitte, it delves more into his backstory and his grudge against the British. The British not only killed his relatives and fatally imprisoned his brother and mother, but also burned down his relatives' home. No wonder the scars from the English officer's sword were not the only ones Andy Jackson bore. It goes into his tough and rough character, a fiery personality whose leadership and loyalty to duty and his men earned him the nickname Old Hickory. His domestic son, Wood Rachel, and his endurance as he raged the war despite a variety of health problems. Kilmeade goes more in depth into the Creek War. There are three or four battles or skirmishes that he covers that I don't recall other books mentioning. Of course, he goes into Jackson having alliances with other Creek, Choctaw, and Cherokee Indians, one battle being fought to save friendly Creeks who were being besieged by the Restics, who were being backed by the British. He explains how the defense of New Orleans was always Jackson's primary goal. Jackson had organized his militia, the Tennessee Volunteers, to defend New Orleans, but the Secretary of State at the time, a guy named Armstrong, had called it off. His defense of Fort Boyer, Alabama, and invasion of Spanish Pensacola, despite concerns of that new Secretary of State, James Monroe, was to deny the British an overland route to invade New Orleans. Kilmeade also highlights the fact that the Battle of New Orleans is the military history, what Remember the Titans is the football, a story of Americans overcoming their differences and uniting to achieve a common goal. It was an army of French colonials, Haitian refugees, Native Americans, freed slaves, American backwoodsmen, Immigrants, rich young men about town, and pirates. There were Yankees, Portuguese, Norwegians, Spanish, Greeks, Italians, Germans, Arabs, Hindus, and Swedes on board the battleship the Louisiana, according to Commodore Patterson, who said it was composed of men of all nations, except English. The story of the Louisiana population that had been subjects formerly of Spain, England, and France, not taking up the British offer of amnesty but instead, showing their loyalty to America should make any Louisianian proud. However, when there was talk from the state politicians of surrender if Jackson was beat, Old Hickory replied that if he was to be compelled to retreat through New Orleans, there would be a warm season. Warm season, they asked. He would burn the Crescent City to the ground. Another cool story Kilmeade devotes time to is that of the Ursula Nuns. Besides from offering General Jackson their prayers, which he gladly accepted. They cared for the wounded. As the battle raged, the Ursula nuns prayed in the Cathedral of St. Louis until a messenger ran into their midst and yelled, Victory is ours! It also goes into the Treaty of Gant and reminds readers of the importance of the Battle of New Orleans despite the fact that it was waged after the treaty was signed. You see, there is this term, Uti Posidius, which means, as you possess, which means that each side would have kept the territory they had in possession at the time of the treaty signing. Due to British splitting of linguistic cares and never having recognized New Orleans as legitimately purchased by America, American diplomats worried that if the Brits captured New Orleans, they would refuse to give it up. A foreign toehold on the mouth of the Mississippi 
would have impeded American Western expansion and the economic growth of the Midwest, as well as been a security threat in case of a third war. So the battle is important, despite what Yankees like Charles Adams would say. This is why the Miracle of New Orleans is prime material for summer blockbuster release. Are you listening, Jerry Brockheimer and Michael Bay? I could see Mel Gibson, Daniel Craig, or maybe Russell Crowe playing Andrew Jackson. Here's some tough guy lines. Don't mind these rockets, they are mere toys to amuse children. By the almighty God, if you do not send me balls and powder instantly, I shall chop off your head and have it rammed into one of those field pieces. Andrew Jackson to Governor Claiborne are not receiving eminence. Are we the titled slaves of George III, the military conscripts of Napoleon the Great, or the frozen peasants the Russians are? No, we are the free-born sons of America, citizens of the only republic now existing in the world. By the eternal, they shall not sweep on our soil. There'll be bloody noses before this happens. I owe the British a debt of vengeance. Because it is an epic and important event in American history, I believe that Andrew Jackson in The Miracle of New Orleans by Ryan Kameed should be an epic summer movie. Possibly produced by Jerry Brockenheimer and directed by Michael Bay. In 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down to mighty Mississippi. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share with all your friends. And let me know in the comment section what epic event from American history you think would make an epic summer blockbuster release.